Operation Voltaic Violence is a community man versus machine event created by Moonlight MVM. This campaign came out on May 26th and ended on June 12th, featuring 6 intermediate missions, 9 advanced missions, and 6 expert missions. And my objective in this video is to complete said expert missions to earn this shiny medal. Without further ado, let's get started. The first mission I'm going to do is Sporulation, because it's the first expert mission that I saw from their server list. I'm going to run Damage Scout with a Backscatter, Milk, and the Fan of War. I purchased Move Speed and Jump Height, then I upgraded damage on my gun. People usually like to build resistances for Scout, but trust me, those two body upgrades are more than enough in the beginning. All the money I'm getting gives me a lot of extra health. Dodging enemy fire is super easy thanks to my extra mobility. And I'm running the backscatter to deal with mini crits from behind. And with the damage bonus, I should be able to take out medics in one shot. I didn't have penetration to kill at least one of these medics here, but we didn't have a demo running stickies. I probably should have let Spike take care of him, but it was already too late. We got 1300 credits from doing that wave, and I'm funneling that into crit resist and two points of damage. I know damage scout doesn't get resistances early game, but crit resist really isn't something you should skip, especially when there's crit soldiers this next wave. And speaking of next wave, there were some more medics to kill and my gun was putting in some work. We were getting overwhelmed when they just started sending out giant medics with pyros that had extended flamethrower range, and I had just noticed that they went farther with the bomb than expected. When this last giant pair came in, they just sent out a whole bunch of crit soldiers that just killed my entire team, and we filled that wave instantly. And that also caused my engineer to rage quit, so I had to wait 4 minutes for a new teammate, who then chose to play sniper so we didn't have an engineer for round 2 and we're running double heavy? Gotta give some credit though, this wave actually went super well despite having no dispenser or sentry gun. Also, I'm just starting to notice that some robots were larger than they should be, just uh, don't worry about that. Wave 3 had tanks as the main targets to beat it, kind of like the last wave of Hamlet Hostility from Rottenberg. I replaced my amount of milk with Criticola for mini crits and I maxed out damage and reload speed for my backscatter. Since I have the Criticola, I can drink it to gain mini crits which will allow me to dish out more damage from the tank. With my backscatter, I can get around 10 10 shots maximum before it expires. It will also mark me for death while I'm doing it as well, but with crit resistance, I should be fine. I do have to remember to get money from the robots though, so I can't work on tanks for long. And speaking of robots, I had to defend the hash from myself for a while, which also caused us to cut it very close with the tanks. Especially the last one though, because it was like a millisecond before the hash would explode. A bot penetration just to help shoot through crowds and two points of firing speed, and yeah, at this point, it's time to buy some resistances. There's not many pyros who consider buying fire resist, but very soon I came to regret it. I had to defend the bomb again, along with Demo Man this time, because we were the only people around to do so, because as it turns out, our engineer, medic, and heavy did not set up according to the bomb path, and it caused us to lose that wave. Neither me or the team asked the engineer to move his stuff to the left side, since that's where they were going, but looking back now, I kinda wish I did, because this happened for the second time. Anyways, moving on, Colonel Barrage was like super easy to dodge, thanks to his slow ass rockets, and me and the spy were able to draw the crit heavies away from destroying our team. I bought some more resistances for wave 5, nothing really special. This wave started pouring out giant bong scouts and just swarms of short stop scouts. Now, you really have to kill these bong scouts quickly or else they'll just drink up to become invincible for a few seconds. And because I didn't put slow on my milk, I had to catch up and try to buy a block as much as I could. I had to repeat this for the second time, but this was much easier since I can just stand here at this corner. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of just going out to get money as the bomb got overwhelmed by the short stop scouts. Oh boy, they're a lot more tankier than you'd think. It was on our third attempt that we made it this far, and at this point, it's important that we kill these sentry nests. These engineers are pocketed by quick fix medics and it's really annoying if they pop uber because then you'll need high enough damage to kill these guys and if you let the engineers set up, you will need to deal with their turret and teleport as well. If you don't destroy these teleporters, well, the robots will spawn in with a few seconds of uber and depending on where they teleport into, it will be extremely bad. But luckily we destroyed all teleporters just before this next subwave, where it's just giant deflector heavies with 3 uber medics each. This part was extremely easy for our team to deal with. Alright, wave 6. I actually did get slow on my milk for the first time just to prepare for wave 6 since there are like 15 super scouts, Jesus Christ. When the wave started, these scouts spawned 3 at a time going through different paths, basically right, middle, left. I body block and toss milk to slow them down as much as I could before they it just eventually just stopped working. It was very difficult to manage 3 bombs at once, so we had to drop them all at the hatch. Eventually we got overwhelmed by the sheer amount of bots and lost that wave completely. Round 2, I ditched the mad milk for the cola since it was pretty much guaranteed that the scouts would reach the hatch. And also I forgot to mention that there were actually 3 tanks 
that we have to destroy at the start? These three tanks are small, but they're actually still pretty beefy, and even worse, they also branch into different paths, so if you don't have a couple teammates focusing down, it's pretty much game over. Then our spy switched to power for round 4, and we were finally able to manage both the super scouts and the three tanks. But unfortunately, it gets even worse from here, sending in three types of giants. There is the burst fire shotgun heavy, the crit bison soldier that can bypass medic shields, and the giant crit burst soldier that deals two times more damage, which is about 540 damage per rocket. And with these two giant soldiers, they wiped out our entire team, and it made our medic disappear from the game, which means 10 more minutes of waiting for a new sniper. I've decided to switch to the soda popper because we we're gonna need more damage, but it didn't matter because we failed the wave again. I went soldier with the buff banner so I can give myself and my team extra damage, and I'll be using the beggar's bazooka because it has the highest DPS out of all rocket launchers. To allow me and the others to deal with the tanks, our spy and engineer will camp the bomb hatch to deal with the super scouts. We're finally making progress as the first part of the wave was finally overcome. Our team was able to defend for a while, but we've unfortunately been caught by these crit soldiers failing this wave. But I knew that with this new strategy and team comp, that we were going to win on this next attempt. We're moving on to Wild Wires now, and we're gonna run Scout again. This mission had a very rough beginning as we were getting overwhelmed from the front. Pushed back to the hatch, we were able to fend him off for a good while before the tank just dumped the fat dookie on us. And it took us another round to realize that we need a tank buster. Like the last mission, I went beggar soldier, except this time I'll be using conch to help sustain my team with the healing. We have a flog pyro now, so the tank should die this time, and yeah, it did. There were these giant soldiers with two large medics that were really tanky along with the quick fix uber, which meant doubling their tankiness on top of that. We almost would have lost this wave had I not began by blocking towards the end, and I'm very grateful my teammates just responded in time to destroy the last soldier. Before wave 2 started, I switched off Beggar's Bazooka to the original because, I don't know, just tired of using metal weapons I guess? This wave started sending out shield medics, and since we didn't have a power on our team, the best way we could count on them was me rocket jumping above and killing them. The tunnel the robots were going through this time made it difficult to do, but luckily I can just shoot under them to get the medics. Another thing that was coming later were these giant black box soldiers pocketed by Fitz medics. The main problem with these guys is that they're black box and heal themselves to full HP if they hit the rockets, and if you don't have anything to block or prevent those rockets from hitting teammates, then the wave is a guaranteed failure. I went pyro just for convenience against the shield medics, and I'll be running Dragon's Fury, upgrading 2 points of damage, 1 health on kill, and some mobility. Resistances are way too expensive to invest in right now, so I have to take advantage of corner peeking with the extra speed. The Dragon Fury does a single point of burst damage and has extra range, so it'll help me as I do this. However, it was really bad for air blasting rockets, and our team so suffered having the same problems as last time getting wiped, but this time losing because of a bad cap. This next attempt, however, we were blessed, because this time the soldiers started shooting the sentry guns, which they cannot heal from doing so. The last one was a bit of a struggle since the sentry was down, but we managed to outdamage it before it could heal back up. There were these giant downwards and medics towards the end, but thanks to our spy, we killed them before they ever reached the bomb. I had some more upgrades for my Dragon's Fury before maxing out my move speed, and without that extra move speed, I would not have survived this onslaught. As a pyro, I do need to keep track of the tank as it was going through a tunnel instead of outside where the robots are. I was working on a tank at a decent pace before getting ambushed by some crit soldiers, and that caused our team to fail that wave. I didn't want to make that mistake again, so I swapped my move speed out for a crit resistance. It must have been a repellent because they didn't actually jump me this time, and I was able to destroy the tank, but unfortunately it was all wasted when our team got overwhelmed by the super scouts and gas pass through pyros. We couldn't kill their medics in time, so our damage meant nothing. I thought I could try maxing out air blast force midway, but it was completely useless because they were immune to air blast while deploying the bomb. This next attempt, however, we did actually manage to kill the last giant pyro after our two guys swapped heavy and medic. The super scouts almost deployed the bomb, but our team stopped them just in time to beat the wave. Wave 4 was pretty easy to be honest. There were these giant armored salmon scouts that had beefier HP but a little slower than other giant scouts, and they were coming along with these giant crit bison soldiers. The soldiers were manageable, but these scouts could easily slip past if you don't have anything to slow or body block them. But luckily, we almost had these two things. The last soldier had a medic pop uber, and they were both very close to the bomb. Luckily, the medic got blasted away, and I went over to keep it away with my air blast while the team focuses on the soldier, basically saving the game. And I get to say that because we were able to defend from all the pirates 
pyros and giant devils. I was doing my best to keep the devils on me while I dodged their grenades thanks to my move speed and wave complete. Wave 5, things went downhill. We had a bad setup since everyone forgets that the bomb path switches every wave, this time the right tunnel. Big threats were the medics pocketing the giants, and the closer the pairs got to the hatch, the harder it became to deal with both of them. This got exponentially worse when they started sending a Colonel Barrage with a giant crits medic, basically wiping our entire team. I switched over to Spy to solve this problem using the big earner and dead ringer. I maxed my armor penetration first before moving on to mobility, some resistances, and health regen. I didn't do attack speed for now because the map is pretty claustrophobic, and I can't stick around in one place for too long, so I need to make these stabs deal massive damage. I started to notice that my game was going so bad that these robots were becoming invisible, so I had to fix it by recording a demo file and then stopping it. Anyway, we're on to the two pyro and medic combos now, and these medics were really annoying to kill because they pop uber every two seconds. They only last for a short while, but it would really suck if you detonate stickies when they just uber. Still, we were able to make it past that. I switched back to pyro for the last wave since there were like three tanks here, but holy shit, that's a lot of giants. Our scout switched to flock pyro to help deal with the tanks as well. Definitely was a good call because two tanks spawned back to back along with a boss soldier that was basically just a giant rapid fire soldier but with the battalions back up and fires a lot of rockets at once dealing a ton of damage if you were caught. There was still one tank going through the tunnel by the time the boss was destroyed. It may have been my fault for focusing on defending the bomb rather than the tank because we didn't have enough tank damage before it deployed the bomb. I went soldier with the battalions back up for extra defense and had another soldier go buff banner for team damage. Because two of us went soldier that meant that we could both deal damage to the tanks behind the spawn barrier to help out pyro out. Boss managed to get far before he and some spies killed our team but we were able to drop the bomb at the corner and destroyed both tanks in the process. By this point they were sending out a lot of giant robots and we had to do our very best to hold this defense here. The giant scouts can easily slip past us and end the game if we weren't on top of it but fortunately this part went very smoothly as combining both of our banners meant we were dealing more damage and able to take more damage from the onslaught. On our last sub wave we had to deal with the last tank and another boss. This boss was just like the soldier from last time only he uses the conjurer which means he can go faster and heal from hitting us. We could have been this mission had we not been extremely unlucky here because towards the end the soldier jumped over our heavy that was body blocking it, instantly killing both our heavy and pyro. And without those two at the worst moment possible, well, you know what happens next. And that turned out to be a bad omen. Because on our next two attempts, we were failing the second part constantly because we weren't able to hold our ground against a giant rush. Much as I like our team comp currently, we're having a lot of trouble with giants, there is only one class to play. Dishonored Dynasty is the third expert mission of this tour, and we're gonna go medic using the basic medigun, focusing on uber charge rate while also upgrading the shield. I could go for healing rate and overkill expert, but I felt that it was better to get more uber charges than more healing. Now this mission has 8 waves, which means more checkpoints and easier waves while still taking the same time to beat it, but if we learn anything from past missions, there will definitely be some bullshit along the way. I got another point of uber charge rate and got some fire resist. Then I swapped to my syringe gun and bought mag milk syringes. To be honest, I didn't really use this a lot, so it was just a 200 credit waste. I got some fire resist as well because fire can go through my shield and the dragon fury powers can deal massive damage if I'm burning. We've been getting pushed far back by these tanks and the robots and I've been trying to defend the bomb by myself but it turned out to be a mistake as a giant scout grabbed the bomb and went straight for the hatch. I swapped out the minigun with the crits creed because I wasn't really getting much value out of it since everyone sits far back from the robots and we're gonna need to clear out crowds of these pyros since they're the worst robots in this wave. The tank was getting very close to the hatch and I popped my crits just in time for my pyro to destroy it. We were able to defend the bomb on until giant brass beast heavy strolled in with three uber medics. Body blocking here was basically a requirement in order for us to win, mostly because I didn't want to do this wave again. I maxed out my uber upgrades and bought some jump pike because I just wanted to. This wave started out with a whole bunch of gauntlet heavies and giant burst soldiers. I had very bad shield timings here, which caused us to lose that front very quickly. We moved forward to this archway to defend and seek out the engineer's teleporter, but quickly lost to the giant shotgun heavies that had contours on their backs. We held our defense at this corner just by body blocking, and if you're wondering why I'm facing the ground as I do this, it's because I'm 
pulling the shield closer to my body and it prevents the closest robots from ever shooting me. I'm sorry for making all sea grass as I'm recording this, but sometimes you have to do some cheesing to beat these missions. I got crit resist for wave 4 as well as healing mastery for my medigun. I'm gonna need to not be killed instantly if I'm going to survive against crit soldiers and giant crit heavies. We were shredding through robots just fine before losing because you can't play MVM without a tank buster. So we ran it back with a flog power and the tank got snapped. The last two giants were most problematic in this one. The giant soldiers were paired with a crit fix poppable medic, meaning that they had a higher health threshold to pop their uber. These guys are a massive problem and can reset the entire wave if you can't deal with them. But luckily with the power of body blocking, we were able to stall their uber and kill both of them in time. I maxed out healing mastery and that'll be it for my medigun for now. I'm gonna avoid building overheal expert for now because while the large overheal for my teammates is nice, the slow overheal decay means it slows down my uber charge rate and I don't want that. We started getting rushed by these super scouts and we managed to block all of them at this corner killing half of them before they come back later. The robots were being buffed with extra damage by these giant soldiers and they pushed us back as they were moving towards the right side. The second wave of super scouts were coming in and this time there were two crit boosted brass beast heavies coming. They had two giant medics for each heavy but thank god they didn't pop their uber because that would have been extremely bad when they were this close to the hatch. Wave 6 started out with these two tanks and every single robot in this wave had crits. Since half of our team died there was no one including me able to slow the bomb down forcing us to play near the hatch. And surprisingly we actually managed to hold our ground against them even going so far as to destroying both tanks before they ever dropped the bomb. But our luck was starting to run out. We had crit soldiers with medics as the last giant and my shield just ran out in this moment and I got blasted into the air and then faced that by a random spy. This first pair got down but I guess everyone forgot about the second one because everyone was shooting at the soldier while I was being healed by their medic. Meaning we were dealing no damage at all and then we got back hats by robots from the other side. Such a shame, really. This wave went on for 20 more minutes in our run. Second attempt, we cut it close with the second tank again, and we still had the same problem, except this time, half of our team died to the crit robots. Third time, uh, our pyro got squished into the wall by this tank, but we still beat it though. There was the sentry buster that went past us and exploded our sentry gun. Then immediately after, some robot deployed the bomb behind us. Uh, fourth time's the charm, right? Yes, actually. Our team actually remembered to kill the medic this time around, and we killed both it and the giant soldier with it. Towards the end, these Contra directed soldier spawn. I'm not sure why they're here after all that. I guess we just killed these giants way too fast. Wave 7 had this team comp or coordination check because there are these giant vaccinator medics of different types. Basically, if your damage type matches the medics, like minigun versus bullet medic, you basically deal no damage. So you have to rely on other classes like pyro or demo man to kill the medics themselves. The third giant heavy was a piece of cake, but after killing him, the wave just started becoming chaotic. There were these scouts that ran past us and pyros that were just randomly speedrunning, so we had to leave the sentry at the bomb back. Home. Also, there's more giant heavies and soldiers with crits. This one group was closing in with Uber, so I had to do the classic body block and look down and shame combo. But our butt cheeks clenched even harder when this tank was closing in with about 75% HP, and all hands were on deck for this one. Jesus fucking Christ. And does it get easier? No! Because this next part just annihilated us. This giant group had a heavy pocketed by a medic and had these two Contra soldiers alongside and all of them had crits. The team was getting slaughtered left and right and me and the pirate were trying to buy some more time for the others to buy back in. We managed to kill this first group but one second later the next one came in and yeah, you know what happens next. By this point, our team was just becoming winded. All of us got back to where we left off before these last few giants came in. Hey, remember when I said that there would be some bullshit along the way? Well, it's gonna start happening. See, we were able to get to this last part, beating the tank and everything as well. But if you remember from before, there was not one little medic that came with these giants. <laughs> and you're not gonna believe what I'm about to show you. I had to tell my team just to let them cap the bomb, and in retrospect, I probably should have called an admin. Then, unfortunately, it took one person to leave the game, and one by one, the rest of the team went and quit as well. And before you know it, me as well. Psych! You think I'd quit when we were so far ahead? Well, thankfully, Moonlight TF was gracious to allow players to see their servers asking players to join their session through the Moonlight Discord. Well, it's a good thing I have connections with Potato.tf, which is another community MVM group that launches operations like Botaic Violence. I tapped a join request for people to help finish my session, and it definitely worked my favor this time, as opposed to my stat Discord. We're so bad. We're so bad.
Wave 8 is literally the easiest wave I've ever done. It's basically a giant tanky demonite boss that jumps high and charges like those samurai demos. And while I was spectating, there was one moment where the boss was charging towards the water and almost fell off. And you know what your boy had to do. Well, Japan was pretty fun, but now it's time to hit Depredation, which takes place on this map called Power Plant. We're just gonna start off with Spy getting damage in before moving on to speed. We don't have a scout this wave, so I'm gonna have to rotate between stabbing medics and giants while grabbing all that sweet money. By the way, you may have noticed that I've been disguising as a medic instead of scout like normal people do. The reason why is that unlike the scout, the medic has voice lines specifically for MVM, the most important being when giants spawn. Uberbot! Sniper! They're attacking the gate! They have a bomb! Also, if you think Spy loses speed here, no he doesn't because they increase his speed in the Meet Your Match update to match the medics. So all the more reason to disguise as him over the scout. Wave 2 started smoothly as Wave 1. I was harassing this giant soldier for a while before realizing again that I need to collect money. We were doing okay on takes without a pyro and the map layout gave us plenty of time to bust through them. However, this last part was overwhelming us with giant heavies and pyros. I was doing my best to stab the heavies before being stabbed myself and our defense couldn't keep up with the robot causing us to lose the wave. I switched to scout once again for this next attempt, and I guess the entire run for that matter. I need to reliably collect cash while at the same time support with the tank as well. I'm gonna be using the scatter gun this time over the back scatter just to change it up, since I was using it for the past two maps. Wave 3 was a rough start for me, but personally it was because they were invisible robots, so I had to go fix it. We were pushed back on the later half of the mission, and I already lost money, but it was made even worse when there were sentry nests blocking me from collecting cash out in front. This last part though, holy shit, they started sending out a ton of giant robots including Armored Salmon Scouts. We killed all the scouts here, but somehow these last two soldiers broke through our defenses causing a wave loss. One guy quit over that, which sucks, but during the wave he managed to get someone new. For the next few attempts, we were constantly overrun on the second part, and it was the fourth time that we actually managed to get back to the last few soldiers. I was doing my best to draw the black box soldiers' attention, but then I got back zapped out of nowhere, and the black box soldiers just healed back up and dunked a bomb right into the hatch. People were leaving again, god damn it man, and I had just paused the footage while I was waiting for more players. Okay, and we're back. I managed to get three more people in from the Potato Discord, but we had to restart the entire mission just so we can get two more. We caught up to wave three and we were actually able to hold the first area so well that the two soldiers we had a problem with were destroyed first before the giant scouts were. So yeah, shout out to my new team. On wave four, I bought a recall canteen. I collect enough cash so I could use it to grab a few ammo canteens. Few reasons. One, it reloads my scout gun instantly, which will help with damaging tanks. And second, it fully refreshes my Criticola, meaning that once my mini crits expires, I can just drink it again and do even more damage. Of course, that didn't matter though, because we can't do enough damage, so we have to get a pyro. There were uber medics coming this wave, but not to worry though, because even though I'm not running back scatter, if I build a lot of damage on my scatter gun, I can just one shot them. Unfortunately, there was margin for error as you miss just a little bit of damage, and you have to get really close to kill them, and depending on the robots around them, you would die in the process. A few giants that are left are these corner barrages, they're pretty easy to deal with. All that's left to destroy really was this last tank. Next wave started with this soldier boss. It was using a rocket launcher that fired bison projectiles, hence their icon, and they also heal on hits. But that didn't matter, the medic ubered the heavy nullifying all damage to healing for the soldier, and it was also being body blocked, so the boss did jack shit and it was completely easy to kill. We got caught by this next surprise though, this giant scout rush came and took the bomb all the way to the hatch. It was super unfortunate too, considering this is the only wave that these robots actually go through this route, and we didn't adjust to it. We held up well against the incoming bison soldiers, but we got steamed rolled by these crit conch soldiers. These guys came in full force and completely stormed the hatch, so our team failed here. We're gonna do this wave again, but hold up, because this part is just hilarious. So you may have noticed that our medic was not using a shield for like the entire mission. Now bear in mind, all upgrades except the gas passer upgrade are allowed on moonlight servers, so our medic's not using it because they're just based like that. This actually irritated one of our other teammates, and he was getting so mad because our medic was not using shields or canteens either since the beginning of the mission, and then just going off on him for not using specific weapons like the crit 
Let's Craig or Uber saw. And then when we failed wave 5, he just upped and left. <laughs> that was honestly funny as shit. Adding salt to the wound that our medic was carrying the team pretty hard by spamming Mad Milk syringes and Ubers. Ha! <laughs> so anyway, boss gets floated like a launcher. Giant scout's dead. Backstab their medics. Beat that wave 5 dudes. Okay, let's just get on already. Wave 6 had like 4 tanks spawning back to back along with these strong giants. Was bullet spongy medics are back, but weren't that much of a big deal. It's just the giants themselves that were problematic, them being brass heavies and beggar soldiers, and they distracted our team long enough that we couldn't destroy the last tank in time. It's not that much about this wave, honestly, we just needed to balance out damage between the two targets, and on a second attempt, it got got. Wave 7, we actually beat this in one go, so enjoy the montage. Welcome to the coal mines, and we're gonna fail the first wave of a mission called Path of Radiance. By the way, this is the only sniper gameplay you're gonna get on this map, cause right after this, I switched to heavy to beat this wave. I tacked on just the point of firing speed, projectile penetration, before adding some health on kill and mobility. Now I know you already disliked this video because my upgrades are based, but hear me out. Heavy is the poster boy for damage, cause his minigun shreds everything except tanks. And my healing is supported by my medic and scout's mad milk, so I won't have to worry about resistances as much. As to why I purchased move speed, it's, well... You know, we beat that wave easily, but all of what I just said is immediately going into the trash because I benched my heavy for this next one. The robots in this wave were manageable as I bought fire resist for the fury powers and we could kill the black box soldiers just fine. However, just like any other mission, we had no tank busters and... So unfortunately, I switched to Pyro, but this time, I'm gonna be using the Phlogistonator. But I had to wait for more players, cause people just upped and left, and I had to wait for 30 minutes. I actually didn't ping anyone to come, I was just playing Honkai Star Rail in the background grinding Calyxes. God, what do I feel sick right now? Anyways, moving on, I upgraded my pyro similar to last time, except I made some room to build mobility and resistances. The fog is basically the meta weapon for pyro, because you can taunt to get ubercharged when the meter gets full from damaging robots, and after that, you can get full crits for about 6 seconds, which is very good for tank busting. That's why they call pyro the tank slip. Anyway, we solved our tank problem and completed the wave. Then I went back to using the dragon's fury. God damn it, I wish that I used other pyro weapons during this event. I switched over to it just to kill these medics, because with enough damage upgrades, I can kill them in 2 shots before they pop Uber charge. This wave was pretty quick honestly, but it gave me quite an embarrassing death. We were able to block this last pair before they got to drop the bomb, and our team was able to complete this wave. Wave 5 also went by smoothly. It started off with a tank and a crit kernel barrage with two medics going down the same path. The team actually separated the medics away from barrage, meaning it can be destroyed by itself, and the medic was left ubering nobody. They were completely harmless, which allowed us to focus on taking down the tank, and then we killed the medic to start the next sub wave. The first three heavies had two uber medics on each, while the last three had three vaccinator medics resisting fire, bullet, and and blast damage together. It really didn't matter because we had all damage types to counter one another and the wave basically became a joke. Alright, wave 6. We're actually going to be here for a while. It started similar to wave 5 except this time there were two tanks, red and blue for some reason, and two groups of a heavy, medic, and two pyros. These guys were not a problem for our team but they still pushed us far to the hash. Okay, there is this boss coming up which is just a giant demonite boss with 50,000 health and can leech 4,000 health from killing your teammates. Not so bad. But hold on, it gets worse. If it gets body blocks or slow to a halt, it will launch high up going over whatever's blocking it so you wouldn't be able to body block it for long and you also need tons of damage to beat this guy our team was not putting enough damage to stop him so i had to go uber medic and sell as much as i could he may jump over me in our sentry gun but any body block is better than no body block also we had both soldiers slow down the boss while i build up my shield and uber again and it was just enough to beat this guy we got the last two tanks coming in what's left of the giants now are what seems like groups of three demo men and a soldier buffing each one okay i'm gonna go on a rant here and say that this part was insanely stupid. I want you guys to witness this footage of the next batch of giants unedited.
All right, let me explain what the hell just happened using someone else's footage. So like I said before, there are these groups of demo men with a soldier buff coming in. The first group were buffed with the Conjurer, which boosts move speed and gives health on hits. Now, there are also battalion soldiers that grew with the demo men as well, coming in as a second group. If you don't know how the battalion's backup works, it basically gives damage resist and crit immunity. Then this repeats with the next two groups, so the third group will have the Conjurer buff. And because this third group is moving faster, they allow themselves to catch up with the second group, combining both soldier buffs together and having 6 demo men in this giant death ball. And this completely fucked over our team. So I don't care if you call this a skill issue because I believe it should not have been this way. And I say that this part was stupid because on the last group of giants, we just completely dunked on them and beat the mission. So I don't know dude, that moment from before is just a massive difficulty spike out of nowhere on top of that boss from earlier, man. Anyway, sorry for the long rants. Let's just play the thing already. Final, the last expert mission of this tour. Path of Radiance was actually the last mission I did to complete the tour, and the reason why I'm putting Nullified Processor as the last to cover is because according to people who played this and have taken the survey, this was the worst mission out of all of them. Instead of recording through OBS originally, I recorded this using the TF2 demo recorder because I was thinking about doing footage in third person like those TF2 frag movies, but the stuff needed to do that were way too complicated to work with, so the entire idea was scrapped. You're definitely going to see some weird things as we go, so I'm sorry in advance. That it seemed like a good idea to play this, so I'll be using Fred's Trig and focusing on Ubercharge like on Dishonored Dynasty. By the way, there are only 5 waves in this mission, so the waves will be denser, but don't you ever think for a second that it will be finished in this way. Wave 2 had these Dragon Fury powers with Conch Soldiers. These giant shotgun heavies were not a bother later in the wave, but these Burst Fire Soldiers came in and killed our team instantly. Our defense wasn't great when they arrived, so they just bombed our base for free. I bought Fire Resist for this next attempt, so the Pyros won't immediately kill me on eye contact. We've also held at the same area against the Giants again, and I made sure that I had my shield up for every time those soldiers just came up. Please do not tell me that this is cheap gameplay, man. Like, these missions have already been telling me to play dirty right from the very beginning. Anyways, moving on to wave 3, there are two tanks in the beginning, and there were Fury Pyros, Demo Man, and Giant Scouts. We were being pushed back along with the tank that was body blocking our fire, and so we couldn't hold it here for long, forcing us back to home base. That also means we have to worry about both the bombs and the tanks, and with that in mind, we managed to cut it very close with the last tank before it deployed. We prepared our defenses for the incoming Giant Heavy Medic combo. However, it was not enough for a single pair because despite our best to kill this medic here, it just popped uber and with my shield running out, I couldn't body block any longer. It took us several attempts to beat this one. Sometimes the scouts and robots overwhelmed our team and other times they didn't. On this try though, we managed to beat the first combo by doing the same body block thing again. Surprisingly, the medic didn't pop their uber considering they're the proper medics from past missions and it made it easy to kill this heavy. The next one however, was not so successful. Our heavy used knockback rage to separate the medic away so we could focus down the heavy. However, our luck was soon to run out because the medic was speed running back to his boyfriend. I tried to block his healing with my shield, but I failed to do so, reversing basically all of our progress on the heavy and ending this wave. Okay, obviously these medics were the only thing holding us back from completing this, so I have to go spy to take them out. That would also mean losing out on medic shield, so my team was struggling with the first and second part for a couple of attempts before picking up back where we left off. I was harder focusing on the medics since I was the best class possible to do that. And yeah, these medics need to be destroyed so that my team would have no problem against these heavies. At best, I I could stab him 2 to 3 times before getting gunned down, but that damage was nothing to scoff at. I stabbed the last medic just in time before my team would accidentally pop them, and from there, we finally completed wave 3. Wave 4 was really annoying to play spy on this one. The wave starts with 2 bombs now, and they're being carried by giant crit pyros that had extended flamethrower range. Then there came swarms of sandman scouts that made it even more difficult to go in for stabs, just crowding around the pyros backs. After those pyros died, they sent out giant heater heavies with armored medics. These heavies cast a firing around them when they spin their minigun. So it was a 
going to get rid of the afterburn when I started stabbing. But we'll have to hold up the spy gameplay for now because our team got overwhelmed by the scouts. I gotta make it easier to kill these medics, so I decided to go sniper using explosive headshot. This upgrade makes it easier for me to target medics in proximity if I go for headshots at nearby targets. I hung out at the right side of the map that was safe for now, but unfortunately I couldn't hold the spot for long because the bomb reached far enough to the hatch that the robots came over to kill me. Then bad luck came with the bomb carrier and game over. I switched over to him as he maker for consistency, which basically allows me to shoot without scoping in and out constantly. Our team was able to hold that bridge for a good while before being pushed back and I just had an embarrassing death again, but this wave gets even worse. These two giants just started spawning and yup, it's these fuckers again. I didn't have much room to kill those medics before getting stabbed and those giants got way too far ahead and they just popped their ubers. Great. Alright, there's no other way to beat this. I'm gonna have to tough this one out as a spy. Alright, we're at the home stretch now, everybody. We're almost there. This last wave starts out with two tanks along with two giants. The giant rapid fire demos on the left and crit bison soldiers on the right. I'm gonna focus these soldiers because their weapon shoots through shields and tanks. And the latter, our power complained about in chat. The next part comes with pairs of burst fire crit soldiers and a third tank. I can take care of these soldiers, but since they don't have a target to shoot, they're gonna lock onto me instantly when I stab. It's up until the last two soldiers that we get the final boss of this mission. First, I gotta help the team with the soldiers so they can finish off the last tank. Oh, Alright, this will be pretty easy if I dodge this flamethrower. Oh, I see how this is gonna be. Did beat that in the last thing of the mission? Seriously? Yeah. <coughs> it's a pyro with 35,000 health, it's shooting out flames with extended range and flares at the same time, and it completely fucks over spies because the boss Gerardi's him on backstab. That means all robots would detect me even if I use my dead ringer. And if I was not spending and backstabbing the boss, I would be out of the game for like 8 seconds. I could only contribute so little before I die and would have to buy back on respawn. And without all that damage coming from me, it was basically game over. Also another bad thing was happening, the item servers just went down. I mean, we could use our current loadouts right now but we cannot switch items whatsoever even joining back didn't work for my teammates so whatever we got prior to that happening was what we had to work with and i decided to go heavy because he was the best class to change to at that moment and also it's basically a requirement that these giants definitely need to be blocked we got so close at the end here running double heavy but it wasn't enough when everyone got downed at the end it was also very unfortunate though that boss was basically a second away from dying and by this point there was one final solution i have to buy these uber charge cans scenes. Oh sweet, I got a medal. Nice dude. <laughs>